My name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 49. Day number 3049, 3 represents the fact that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 49, we are on page number 255, 2.8.5, 2.8.5, as I explained yesterday and the day before yesterday, that part B and part C that we are going to do today, they are not in the book, only the part A, the first one, 2.8.5, and what we labeled as part A is the one that appears in the book. In addition to the one that appears in the book, we're going to do three more problems. We did one yesterday, we're going to do one today, and then one in the next video. The problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. I'm going to read it to you, and then we'll see what we can do with it, okay? Here's what it says. It says that the given equation represents the parabola. This is the equation that is given to us. y is equal to x times x plus 2 in parentheses minus 24. And we are told that that equation represents the parabola. The question is, which of the following equivalent forms? All of these three forms that you see, all of these three equations that you see, they are equivalent form, they are claiming, of this equation. The question is, which of the following equivalent forms out of these three, of the, of the given parabola, displays either as constant or as coefficient? The x-intercept, the y-intercept, the minimum value of the parabola, and the coordinates of the vertex. So we just simply have to match which one it is. Okay, one more time, it says the given equation represents the parabola. Which of the following equivalent form of the equation of the given parabola displays either as constant or coefficient the x-intercept, the minimum value, the coordinates of vertex, and the y-intercept? Let's get going, shall we? So the equation that is given to us is right here. I'm going to rewrite it here. It says y is equal to x times x plus 2 right here, minus 24. And as you can clearly see, it's pretty straightforward. If you open the parentheses, we're going to get x squared plus 2x minus 24 equals y, which is exactly what we see there. As you can see, they are equivalent. This equation, when it's put in this form, or if you could have left it like that here, this here, when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, we can clearly see that when x is equal to 0, y is going to be 24. From this equation we can see, without having to do, we don't have to do any of this work here, we can clearly see that when x is equal to 0, this is going to become 0 and this is going to become 0, and y will equal negative 24. And of course, when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, here is your parabola here, something like this, and x is equal to 0 along y-axis. So what did we just find? Well, I shouldn't have drawn it like this. The way I drew it here, the vertex looks like falls right on the y-axis. I don't want it to. I don't want vertex to be right there. In other words, I don't want line of symmetry to be zero. It will be more interesting if the line of symmetry is not zero. Let's redraw it right there. So there is your vertex, but this is what we're looking at right here. When x is equal to zero, we just found the y-intercept right there. That's your y-intercept. When x is equal to zero, y is equal to negative twenty-four. When the equation is written in this form, when the equation is written in that form, we get y-intercept. Mm -hmm. Let's match this thing. So, question was which 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 one of these three equivalent form gives us the y-intercept? The answer is number four matches with a. Let's see what what else we can do with it. Once we have the equation written out in this form. Once we have the equation written out in this form, we can figure out the y-intercept. The question is, how do we go about looking for its x-intercept? Well, we have to factorize it. Let me read out this negative 24, so it's legible. We have to factorize it. I'm going to pick up a speed a little bit. Let's factorize it. We're looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 24 and the sum has to be 2. So I guess positive 6 and a negative 4 would do it. Positive 6 and a negative 4 the product is neg uh, negative 24, and their sum is going to be positive 2. So here we go. x squared, positive 6, and a negative 4. 
positive 6x and negative 4x is going to give us our 2x and the positive 6 and negative 4 the product is negative 4. Let's take out the x common here, we can pick up speed here and from here we can take out negative 4 as common factor. If we take out negative 4 as a common factor, we are left with x from here and here we are left with positive 6. Because positive 6 times negative 4 as we said before is going to give us our negative 24. Now we have a common factor, if you look at these two terms right here, we have a common factor from these two, these two quantities, we have a common factor of x plus 6, that's the common factor. Let's take it out, we take out x plus 6 as a common factor, what we left from this quantity is simply x, what we left from here is negative 4. So there we go, y is equal to x plus 6 times x minus 4. The question is when you write it in this form, when you factorize it, what does this give us? Well, when x is equal to 0, oh sorry, when x is equal to negative 6 here, when x is equal to negative 6, negative 6 and a positive 6, it will become 0. 0 times, doesn't matter what we have here, it's going to be 0. So what did we just find? And what we found here is that when x is equal to negative 6, when x is equal to negative 6, when x is equal to negative 6, y is going to be 0, because negative 6 and positive 6 is going to be 0. Similarly, when x is equal to positive 4, we can see from here, we, without having to do any work at all. In other words, when the equation is written in this form, when the equation is written in this form, we can see visually, just by visual inspection, one can clearly see that when x is equal to positive 4, when x is equal to positive 4, y is going to be 0 again. And where is y 0? y is going to be 0, Here, yeah. this equation right here, y is equal to 0. So what did we find here? We just found the x, we just found the x-intercept. So when it's written in this form, in form A, it gives us the y-intercept, because we clearly see that when x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 4. When x is equal to 0, we are along the y-axis, it gives us the y-intercept. And when it's written in this form, we can clearly see the x-intercept. When x is negative 6, y is equal to 0. When x is positive 4, y is equal to 0 again. It has two intercepts, two x-intercepts that is. So if the question was, which one of these forms gives us the x-intercept? The answer is, x-intercept is found by part c. x-intercept is found by part c. Let's work on the minimum value and the vertex. Let's, let's work on the minimum value and the vertex. Now, here's what's going on. Of course, if we knew our if we, if you knew our materials, this problem can be done in a few seconds because you know which 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 form uh, uh, to look for. Uh, you you would know how to recognize the given form of a parabola, and you will immediately see which one does the job here. But if we didn't know it, we'll have to do our little work. The question is, how do we find the coordinates of the vertex? Well, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Well. Assuming that we do not know how to recognize it, I'm going to show you the long way, and once we know the long way, we'll realize uh, in the future as to go, how to go about recognizing the equation of the parabola written in a form which shows us the coordinates of its vertex and the minimum value. Because once we know the coordinates of the vertex, we know the minimum value. The minimum value is where, where, where the vertex is. Part 2 and part 3 are one and the same. They are not asking for two different things. They are the same thing. Question is how do we go about it? Well, this is what we are going to do. Okay, listen carefully. So, here I am going to redo it a little bit better. Redo it to, to scale. So, we have positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. Positive 4 right here. That was 1 here. And a negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right here. Negative 6. A negative 6 and a positive 4. Okay, listen carefully. This is a roundabout way. This is not a direct way. From negative 4 to positive, from negative 6 to positive 4, we have a distance of 10, which means the halfway is going to be a distance of 5. Distance of 5 from negative 6 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1. Or we could have seen that the distance of 5 from that end, because this is positive 4, we're going to go up to 0 and then negative 1. This, this dotted line cuts this into half. This is our line of symmetry. 
this is our line of symmetry for the parabola. So if they had asked us, let's say for example, if they had asked us the equation of the line of symmetry, which they are not asking, the equation of the of the line of symmetry. If they had asked us what's the equation of the line of symmetry, and if we had figured if we could figure out and the equation is given in this form, we have to write it in this form first and then factorize it. Once we factorize it, we find the x x intercept, and once we find the x intercept, we can figure out the line of symmetry. X intercept positive 4 or negative 6, we know is negative 1. So line of symmetry is x is equal to negative 1. The equation of this dotted line is x is equal to negative 1. Are you with me so far? Once we know that x that's the line of symmetry, we know that it's going to go through, it has to be symmetric along, this is the vertex right here. Well, we just know, we just figured out the x-coordinate of the vertex. x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 1. Well, if we know the x-coordinate of the vertex, we can plug it in and figure out the y-coordinates. Let's do that, shall we? Let's do that. So y we know is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 24. I'm using this form right here. Put in x equal to negative 1. Negative 1 is squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus negative 4. Oh, and a negative 4, not minus negative 4. That's, that it's going to become positive 24. You know what I meant. So this is positive 1 and a negative 2. Positive 1 and negative 2 is going to give us negative 1 and negative 24. Looks like it's negative 25. So instead of writing it like this now, we can represent coordinates of the vertex, right here, the coordinates of this vertex is negative 1 and a negative 25. Negative 1 and a negative 25. Those are the coordinates of the vertex. Question is, which one of these equivalent form gives us this coordinates of the vertex by visual inspection? And the answer is this guy right here, B. Let me use entirely different color if I can find one. We use blue, red, I have a green one here. The coordinates of the vertex is going to be found by B, right here. And similarly, the minimum value of the word, uh, minimum value, minimum value of the parabola is also the same thing. Minimum value is negative 25. So which one of this equivalent form, which one of this equivalent form gives us the minimum value of the parabola? The answer is the minimum value per parabola is right here, negative 25. Negative 25 is the minimum value, and we're going to get that minimum value of parabola when x happens to be negative 1. The question is, how do we go from here to here? Once we, once we know how to go from here to here, we will recognize in the future that when the equation is written in this form, when the equation of the parabola is written in this form, that form gives us the coordinates of the vertex. The question is, how do we go from here to here? Let's find out, shall we? This is something we did yesterday and the day before yesterday. We're going to do it one more time. We need room, so I'm going to erase a lot of this stuff here. Let's erase this part as well. So, the equation that was given to us was y is equal to x times x plus 2 minus 24, right here. Let's open it up. So we get x squared plus 2x minus 24. And now we have to employ a method known as completing the squares. Completing the square. Completing the squares, rather. And this is how we do it. y is equal to x squared plus 2x, which we're going to write as 2 times x times 1. 2 times x times 1 is going to give us our 2x. Plus 1 squared. Now that's a, that's a complete square. That's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. a is our x and b is our 1. So this quantity can be written as x plus 1 whole squared. But we can't just leave it like this because that is not what is given to us. This, this quantity tells us that y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's not what we have here. What we were given was x squared plus 2x. We have x squared, we have our 2x. But we have a negative 24 in the original in the original parabola. This is positive 1. That won't do it. We have to have negative 24. So we're going to introduce our negative 24 that we had before. This is what we had before. 
And now we have to undo. Now we have to undo what we did before. We had added, we had added one squared, which is one squared, just one. We need to take away that one. So well, we had added one squared, which is just one. So plus one and a negative one, they're going to kill each other. We have to undo what we had done before. So this quantity from here, x squared plus 2x plus 1 squared is simply x plus 1 whole squared. And now we have negative 24 and negative 1, which gives us our negative 25. And when the equation is written in this form, when the equation is written in this form, the coordinates of the vertex can be very easily identified. Can be very easily identified by visual inspection. We can see from this equation here that the vertex has coordinates of negative 1 and a negative 25. That's all. Right there. We just found it. Without, without having this, if, if we did not know this method, this is what we would have had to do, which is exactly what we did do. If we, if we had not done this work, if we didn't know how to do this work, then the alternative would have been to figure out, to, fi to go from here, to this form here where we find the x-intercepts. Once we know the x-intercept, we find the line of symmetry by going exactly in the middle. Once we have the line of symmetry, we have the x-coordinate of the vertex. Once we have the x-coordinate of the vertex, we put it back in the equation and figure out the y-coordinate of the vertex. But this actually doing the doing the work out, that was not the point. That wasn't what, what that, that wasn't what we were being asked. We were not asked to find out the, uh, the coordinates of the vertex. We were asked which of the following form of the given parabola, which of the following equivalent form of the given parabola will display the coordinates of the vertex. And the answer is this form right here. So one more time, number one matches with C, one matches with C, number two and three match with B. B gives us the minimum value of the parabola, minimum value of the parabola is when this quantity becomes zero, this quantity is going to become zero when x is equal to negative one. When x is equal to negative one, x plus one whole square becomes zero, and y is equal to negative five, and that's the minimum value. We can see clearly it's negative 25, that's the minimum value. So, minimum value of the parabola is given by the form that is given to us in part b, and similarly, the coordinates of the vertex is the same thing. Coordinates of the vertex here, we can see it's negative one and negative 25. So the uh, second part and the third part match with b, and the fourth part, the y-intercept, is given by part A. There we go. If you are looking for a tutor, if you would like me to help you personally, one-to-one -one tutoring, just you and I, online, you can get hold of me at 1-800-808-PREP or you can send me an email, prepsat at aol.com and we'll see what we can do. Uh, that is, if you're looking for a personal private tutor, one-to-one -one tutoring, uh, if you want to be tutored by me, if you want to work, if you would like to work with me. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.